right? So now let's log on to Oracle SQL uh, developer, this one. You don't need to put your hands on to practice all questions, including your homework, okay? And this is the programming. This is not like a typical business class. You know, it's just a listen and then memorize it, and then you will be able to answer questions here without the practice and without the repetitive, you know, errors twice. Then you're not you're, you're not actually know how to program. And so that's always the case. We do code. We do any coding or technical courses. Hands-on experience is very important. So let me log on to eCourse. So at this point, I hope you do not have problem with connection to Oracle. If you do, you have to fix it before the exam because uh, during the exam, you will have to use that. All right, so let's take a look at the question. First, I'm going to say the uh, list question and then, uh, okay, let's do here. So the question was, List the name of each department. So you need to get uh, select okay, D name, right? Okay. And then you need to find out the total number of employees. So that's the count. So count what? Count on uh, uh, so EMP number. Okay. So let's just say that's as a count. Just give one other name. So the EMP account, just try and avoid the name here. EMP account. And then total amount of salaries. So there's a sum of sale. And there's total sale. Total salary. Okay. And then we need to decide what are the data sources. Apparently, we need to use both tables, right? We need to use DPT, DPT table and also EMP table. So therefore, we need to use join. So I'm going to use uh, in the join, okay, uh, EMP on PD dot EPD number equals to EMP dot EPD number. Okay, and then we need to ask whether we need to select cases. Do we need to select cases in this case, in this problem? We just need to list all the all the department's names and their employee accounts, so on so forth, right? So there's really no need to select in any particular case. And we're not subdividing groups either. We're not doing like a factor analysis, trying to divide the cases into different groups either, right? So that is not required. And so there's nowhere and no group by. So we stop there. Okay, so that's it. Professor? Yeah. Uh, I put a group by department name, like D name at the end. Oh, the oh sorry, sorry, hold on, hold on. You do probably, let me see. Uh, you do need the department name, let me see. Because we are doing, uh, hold on, yeah, you are right. So we are doing group functions, right? We're doing group functions. So we need a name, name of each department. It does say depart, de, uh, put a department, but yeah, you're right. So actually it's group by, so. I overlook that for each department group by the name. Yeah. That's right. So you do need to divide the cases because we're doing that. List the name of each department, right? So you do need to say the department. Otherwise, this, this function will be incorrect. Okay. Uh, so when you do like a group, this, uh, find those statistics along with this uh, column name that cannot. Uh, uh, is not a, this that is not allowed unless you you know you have a column names which is uh, as which is like a label for the groups. Okay, so we 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 do have to do group by yeah. Yeah. Okay. So so it's not just it's not just simply doing count. You are actually divide. You are you actually put it employees into different groups. Yeah. Okay. Let's run that and it should be without. It says unknown command. Which one is that? Uh, did I miss anything? Uh, let me see. It says D name is not select D name. 
That's the correct one, right? Count, column, salary, Friday, MP, let me just try to see. I have those tables, D, D, P, T. It does have the name now. Okay, EMP table should be also there. What's wrong? I don't see anything wrong here. Let me, uh, let me run it, that's okay. Okay, it has no error. You missed the DEC EMP. Uh, it should be DESC. DESC, which place DESC? You mean order by? You missed spell describe employee. I misspelled the. Uh... It means below, like below describe department. Oh, oh, oh sorry, sorry. So, yeah. DESC, sorry. Yeah, describe, yeah. Okay. So, summer column is not that necessary, but. Uh... Okay, yeah, thank you. So, yeah, the, the original statement was not the wrong. I don't know why did it give me a wrong error, give me a wrong message in the first place. So, let me run it again. Should it be fine? Okay, there's no problem. All right. So, it says the economy of three people, production one, so on so forth. Okay, the total salary. Production does not have a, uh, the production does not have any employees, I believe, right? Or well, having employee does not have a, uh, salary. So in my case, so you may have different data, but, uh, but in my case, like that. Okay. All right. So that is question 19. Any other questions? Could you do number 20? Number 20. Find the year in which employees hired with a minimum salary more than. Okay. So let me move this up. Okay, so we are going to select year number. So I have to use two chart, right? higher date. And then you see format is Y, 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 Y. Okay. And let's just say this is a higher year. It is higher year. Okay. From, so let me put this question back here. So find the year in which employee is hired. Okay. So uh, with minimal salary. So basically, we do not need the second table. So the EMP table is enough. And then we do not divide the cases, do we? So the question here is minimal salary is more than 1,000. So we need to find those years that in which employees hire with minimal salary more than five. So we are considering all employees, all employees. We do not exclude anyone. So we do not need have a where clause, but then we do need a group by. The reason for that is we are going to do uh, statistics. We are going to do a minimum salary. So group by, and of course, in this case, you have to use two chart also, two chart, and then higher date. And then why, 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 why? Okay. And then heaven. So we're trying to do a minimum salary minimum salary is more than or less than more than 1,000. So bigger than 1,000. Okay. So on that, that will be the one, 1987, 1982. Okay. All right. Any other questions? Has anybody, I don't think anybody's asked about number 12 yet. Could you go over that one? Number 12, okay. Nobody asked yet. For all the employees working in Dallas, this is the name of each one and the number of years has been employed. I think this, we already did this one. Then, well, that was a uh, question 10 of, uh, Homework seven, I think. So anyway, we can do that. Okay. So number twelve, which is do it here. So for adult, those employees working in Dallas, so we just need to find the name of each one. 
and the number of years they worked. So I will do select union. So to get years, we need years, we need to get a higher year to chat. So first higher year, first is current date, current year. Right? And then minus to chat. And then higher date. And then get a year number like that. Okay, we can just say this is EMPH, okay? Employment age. Okay. So that was those are the things we want. And now we are looking for data sources. So apparently we need, in this case, we need uh, uh, we need the information about dollars, location. So we need department name, department information, and also we need the employee table. So we'll do joint. In the joint, EMP, DPD, DPD number equals to EMP, DPD number. Okay. And then after that, let's say whether we need to divide, we need to select cases. So we are trying to do that. All the employees work in dollars. So that is uh, selecting cases. So let's say, well, location equals to dollars. Or if you do not like to type this, you can just use the upper location and equals to Apple, and then put whatever case you like on us. So what does this do is you change the location value into uppercase and also whatever value also into uppercase, and then you compare uppercase with uppercase, right? So now let's say, where do we, do we need to do any group functions in that case? Do we divide the cases? Is the name for each employee and the number of years. So basically, there's no uh, no statistics involved in this question. So that and this is all we need. Okay. I had a question about that. You have a question about which one? This one? Yeah. Missing keyword. Which one is missing? Let me see. Hold on. I have some kind of error here. Me. Uh, join on, sorry, join on. So I missed the keyword on. Okay, so now let me go to those again and then you ask questions. Okay, so what's your question? Um, when we solved that, I think we solved that in class last time or something. Yeah. Um, the join part of the statement was uh, under where. So for the from, it was just yeah. from EMP and DPT. Yeah. And then the yeah. join was in the where statement. Is that correct too? That's correct too. That's basically use it uh, implicitly join, implicitly in the join, or this uh, whatever you call join. So that's equivalent to this one. This is just faster than the other, than the, the user you call join. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. All right. Any other questions? No more. No more questions, everyone. Don't be shy if you have if you have anything that you think uh, you are, uh, you know, it's confusing or you don't think uh, you know you did it right. You need to ask. Okay. Uh, I was just gonna point out that number one and thirteen were the same question. I think. Number one and thirteen the same question probably. Uh, let me see. Find the total number of employees who have never received the commission. Okay. And 30, find the total number of employees who have never received the commissions. Correct. So these are actually the uh, same questions. So I need to change that right away. Otherwise, we'll, we'll come back to the future classes. So let me say that was homework. Uh, three, what is this one? My, uh, is it nine, right? Yeah, homework nine. Oh, or, or no, it's it's homework eight, sorry. Oh, okay, but it's inside uh, week, 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 week nine outline, right? Yeah, week nine outline. Okay, so let me change. 
Okay, so let me change 13 to something else. Can somebody give me a question like it? Something like that? Find a total number of employees who have never received commissions. Uh, find a total number of employees. Uh, uh, salesman. Total number of salesmen. Okay, let's do this. Okay. That way I do not have to give you give us the same kind of a repetitive questions again. All right, thanks for that. And uh, let's let me go back to that. And not that does not apply to you. So if for you guys it will be just graded as like a same question. So instead of 20 points, so maybe just like give 19 points for this question, for this homework. Uh, let's see. Uh, week, uh, which one is this? Okay. Week nine. Yeah. All right, any other questions? All right, no questions? If there's no more questions, I'm going to stop here for you, homework, and I'm going to up upload uh, uh, the answer key to this, uh, to these questions after class. So you can check one by one against yours. So now let's talk about your mutual exam. So this mutual exam will cover, let me see which part will be covered. Okay. So anything that is left by the second exam will be in this exam. So let me tell you exactly what should be in there. What should be covered? Um, so we we have week nine, week eight, week seven, and week six. I think that is uh, all lectures we cover. So we start with normalization. I believe is that correct? There's no week of five, is it? There's no week of five. So there's week six and there's a week four. So week four was the one we did uh, recovered by the first exam. Okay, so so in terms of weekly outlines, so you should review week six, seven, eight, and nine. Four weeks, right? And then in terms of format, uh, I will do pretty much same same thing. So I will do, I will ask you to turn on your video camera so that you will take multiple choice questions in class. And that typically will last around 40, 45 minutes at the most. And then for the rest of the time, you will be doing hands-on questions. So this time the hands-on questions will be including normal forms, normalization, and also SQS statements, okay? So you can just think easily that, uh, you know, I may give you, you know, maybe 10, 15 points on multiple on normal forms and then uh, 10 or 20 points to uh, SQL statements. So those will be uh, your hands-on questions. Uh, as far as whether I would make that as take home or not, I have not decided. You may be required to, to finish all questions during the class time. So, Usually, in a regular semester, we would do like, um, you know, like a 90 minutes exam for midterms, and the final exam will be two hours. Uh, so you might, might, you might be similar to that. So it might be just say, uh, you, uh, you do multiple choice questions, and then after that, you do hands-on questions, write ask your statements, or write, uh, create, uh, do this uh, normal, normalization stuff. So in, in the rest of time. So that basically you should you should have enough time to finish to to do your to 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 do your homework uh, to do uh to do your hands-on questions. Uh, of course if you take a lot of time on multiple choice questions you probably do not have that time. Okay. So so that's that's a possibility. Um, uh, what about uh, it's not going to be since you 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 are going to take that at home. So I will. So even time is restricted, but I will not be able to restrict you from uh, using your lecture notes, using your notes, or using books. Uh, that will be 
uh, will be still there. So you will, it will be still considered Mac, just like a take home. However, the timing, the time may be restricted instead of like unlimited amount of time until, until like 11 o'clock, you may have a time limit. Okay, so that, that might be a little bit different from the first exam. Or, How many so, multiple uh, choice are there? Say it again. How many Can multiple you? choice are there? Multiple choice questions will be still 70%, 70 questions. And the 30% will be on your hands, will be hands on questions. So that part will be the same as the first exam. Make sense? Okay. What what chapter will um oh, what is chapter? Is what yeah. will it start yeah. with? Yeah. So you uh, the normalization chapter was chapter eleven. So you need to do that. Okay. And then uh, chapter 19 definitely will be in there, that, but then the first half of chapter 20 will be there too, okay? It's about, about the joins, about the group functions, all that will be in there. So only thing out of chapter 20 is not there will be like a sub queries and the advanced queries, which, you know, we'll be doing that after the class, after this exam. Okay. So chapter 11 started at like week six? Chapter six, yeah, that's right. Is all normalization stuff. I think that's it. Yeah, chapter eleven. Yeah. Okay. So make sure you, uh, in terms of review, what do you, what do you need, what do you need to review? Uh, those weekly weekly outlines, of course, will be your your homework, your homework multiple choice questions, and your homework hands on questions will be your first priority. Okay. And the second priority will be those lecture notes, those weekly outlines, okay? And then those two chapters. So basically, uh, some of the questions are uh, explained and are detailed in those chapters. So you should follow that, especially for normal forms. If you have still have a concern, if you have few confusions about functional dependency, about the various normal forms, and then the chapter 11, you should read, okay? And then for chapter 19 and 20 is mostly just, you know, writing statements. So I would suggest you just follow, you know, your homework and follow the review list. If you can do all those questions, at least in the review list, then you should be okay. Okay. Do you have any particular questions on the review list? No questions? If there's no questions or any particular, okay, somebody trying to ask. Sorry, hi, yeah, this is Allie. I was wondering, could we go over question 13? Question 13 of review questions? Yes, please. Okay, all right, so I'll do that. Uh, so find, is that the one? Find standard deviation? Is that one you're talking about? Yes. Okay, so find the standard deviation. So, so let's say you are going to, let me do that. So you're doing the group functions again. Select standard deviation with STDDEV or STDD, yeah, STDDEV. And then all the salaries, okay. And then for each department, so you're going to group by, by department, right? So you're going to do from EMP, and then you group by, if you do department, you have two choices. You do department number, department name. So I'm going to use department number to be simple in this case. And then it asks you to what? Are you in descending order? So this, uh, did I talk about order by in, in this class at all? So basically, if you want to uh, order the result, so you will use class order by, and after order by, you can order anything. So for example, in this case, you order by this one, right? Order, order by uh, uh, each department in descending order. So that means you are going to order the result based on by this uh, uh, standard deviation. So you can just say STD, DEV, and then cell 
in descending order by default is a sending order, that's a s c. But if you want to descending order, that means you start with larger number and gradually going down, that will be d e s c. So in descending order. So that's what. Uh, uh, so that basically, I I don't think I I emphasize that order by because this is just say when whenever you have a result, you will sort the result. Okay. Now, what if I also want to show department number along with it? So then in that case, you can say your department number as a label for the group, and then you group by department number, right? And let's say if I want to order by department number also, so let's say order by DEPT number, DEPT number. And then let's say in this case, I will do ascending order, ASC, like that. So what does that mean is you are going to sort the result based on the first 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 you sort based on the standard deviation and numerical values. Okay, largest one, largest one first. And then if they have the same value, then the department number will be sorted as second criteria. So use department number as second criteria to sort the result. Uh, but in this case, you start with smaller department number first and then larger department number next. Okay, so you can you can sort you can order by multiple multiple criteria like that. Okay. All right. Any other questions? So so I guess in this case the second criteria may not uh, may not be uh, doing anything because. You will not say two numbers are identical to you know to shoot, to have two different departments to be sorted. So here there's a null value, null value because I have two employees who have no values. Okay. But if you do not have that case, then you should adjust that uh, last three standard deviations. All right. Any other questions? Now, if you do not have any questions, let's just do a couple of normal normalization problems. Okay, I think uh, this is probably still the most difficult part for some students. Okay, so let's say for, let's do the first question first. Okay, so a transaction table, we have employee ID, account number, balance, and last transaction. And the question is, whether this table conform to the boys card normal form? Why or why not? Okay, and if not, how would you fix it? So, to understand that question, first of all, we need to draw functional dependency diagram. So, I will just use a whiteboard to do that. Okay, so let's say we, let me try and put the question in front of this. Okay, so we have customer ID, account number, balance, so let's try to think of any functional dependencies. So according to definition of boys card normal form, dependent, depend, uh, determinant must be key, so normal form. Each determinant, must be a key. So that key here is any any key, any like candidate key. Okay. So after that, let's try to think of uh, unlike a second or third number phones, you have to start with first number phone and then second number phone or third number phone. For boys card number phones, you essentially don't need that. So let's try let's try to think of any functional dependency here. I think there's one easily one, easy to be identified, that is account number determines balance, right? However, is the is account number the key for this table? It's not, because account number, uh, each account may belong to several customers, right? So for example, this account 375, 375. So that's not a key for this table because it has multiple customers, okay? So so therefore, this table is not in both account number, okay? So, would question? customer, or sorry, would account also determine 
last transaction? I don't think so. Let's see. Okay, so let's see. For example, three seven five here is the last transaction, and then three seven five here. This is last transaction. They are different, are they? So, so given each account, each account number, you have a different last transactions. So therefore, it's not there's no functional dependency between account number and the last transaction. Okay, um, like account and the balance. Given each each account number, there's there's only one balance, right? And so here. So if you know the account number, then you should know the balance. But if you know the account number, you cannot you cannot know last transaction for sure because there could be multiple, right? And as a matter of fact, in this case, last transaction really depends on who who was the owner of uh, who was uh, uh, yeah who was owner of this and have different kind of last transactions. So for example, for this owner two three nine eight, the last transaction was ninety seven. And then two eight uh, two zero nine eight different customer still have different transactions. So basically, this account belongs to three customers. They have they all have different transactions. Okay, so now that's not true. So after that, we can just make a clear, we make a statement. So this the table is not in voice call number form because uh, the determinant. In this account number determines the balance is not 80. Okay, so now let's see how can we fix that. So we are going to use the functional dependency to make a new table. So based on account number determines the balance, we are going to make a new table using the determinant as a key and the balance as non key. And then everything else from the original table. So remember original original table has a custom ID and the last transaction. That was everything else. So everything else plus transistor. Make a new table. So that will include a customer with a customer ID. Yeah, customer ID. Customer ID. And then last transaction. There's all uh, everything else. And the plus the transistor. So account number will be the transistor here. Okay. And if you try to imagine what is, so basically this is a primary key and this is going to be a foreign key, right? And then uh, for voice count number four, the fix may not be clear. So you have two end results, you have two tables, then you need to do it again. You need to make sure that they, uh, they, are, they are now in voice count number four. So for the first table, there's only one functional dependency. That's all count number determines the balance, but the determin determinant is already key. So therefore, therefore, this table is already in voice account number form. And then for the second table, for the second table, what determines last transaction? I guess you will have functional dependency like this. So basically account number and custom ID both determines this last transaction. And in this case, uh, this custom ID and the last and the account number should be primary key already. So, so this is part of a primary key. This is a part of primary key. And you have functional dependency, which is account number and a customer ID determines last transaction. But that's already so. This determinant is already key, right? Because this uh, this uh, in this table and these two columns determines everything else, right? In this table, so therefore this is a key. This is a candidate key can be chosen as a primary key because it's only only candidate key in this one. So therefore, this table is also is already in voice count number four. Make sense? Okay. <clears throat> 
So if you, I think you did, we did that, or maybe you did homework like this uh, as like a, as a second normal phone violation. So actually, this will just violate the second normal phone because you have primary key, which is cons which consisting of customer ID and also account number, the two columns. But then you have partial de functional dependency because balance depends on the account number only. So therefore, this will violate second normal phone. Okay. So remember that if anything violated second normal phone or third normal phone, it will definitely violate voice card number four because both voice card number four is more stringent than third and the second. Make sense? Now let's look at the next table. So here the question asks you, does the following table conform to the third normal form? So we start with third normal form. And then uh, we do third normal form, we have to make sure that it is in first normal form and also second normal form. So do we see any repetitive re repeating columns? So each customer has customer name and they have a salesperson and that region. So I don't see any columns as uh, has multi-values, multi any, any multi-valued columns here. So first normal form is satisfied for this table, right? And what about second normal form? And to do that, we need to decide what is the primary key. So primary key for this one is just customer ID only, I believe. If you know the customer ID, you know the customer name. And if you know the customer ID, of course, you know who is the salesperson and the which region the customer belongs, right? So therefore, this primary key has only one column. As I told you for shortcut, if a, card, if a primary key has only one column and also using first normal phone, then definitely it will be second normal phone. So second normal phone will be satisfied in this case, okay? So next, next we are going to check, say, third normal phone essential condition, whether there's a non-key column determines another non-key column. Whether there's any non-key column determines another non-key column. I do say one here. So basically, if you know the salesperson, you can you know the region, do you? So for example, Smith, if you know Smith, is the region is South. Is that true? Yeah, South, South, right? And then Laura is a West, okay? And the Higgs is North. So if you know the salesperson, then you know the region. So this one does violating thought number four, okay? So let's say, how can we write this? So if you're going to do exam or whatever, then you're going to write a formula, make sure you explain, explain why, okay? So first of all, the table is in first normal form because no repeating or multi-value columns. Or multi-value. Does everybody understand the multi-value columns? It's just say uh, given one customer, for example, in this case, given one customer, there's one column which has multiple values. So for example, if a customer has a multiple salesperson, one one customer have multiple salesperson, then then and the, the, the salesperson will be multi-valued attributes. Okay. Just imagine that if a person has a multiple major, then major is multi-valued attributes, right? If a person has a multiple dependence, then that's more uh, dependence and multi-valued attributes. Okay. So just think of use that as an example to think <clears throat> whether you uh, whether whether you have still have confusions about the multi-valued attributes. So most people I think it's clear, but there's but some students probably still uh, not clear about multi-valued attributes. Okay. And uh, uh, now let's check the second normal form. Okay, so the table is in second normal form or not? It's the first normal form. Okay, the table is so basically we have primary key which equals to customer ID only. Okay, since it is uh, uh, the tables, uh, the table is in second normal form because. Okay, PK consists consists of one single column. So you can make a judgment because if you have only single column, the whole is a part of part as a whole, right? So there will be no partial functional dependencies. Okay. And so there will 
the no partial FDs. Okay. And now we do third number form. We 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 want to check whether it is in third number form. So we now what we do is we found a function, we do a functional dependency here. Okay, say customer ID and the customer name and the sales sales person and the region. Okay. And then we do say that a custom ID determines everything else. That is actually the reason for that key. So this is a custom ID is a key. And then salesperson also determines the region. So therefore we have a transitive functional dependency. Do you see that? Or we have a non-key column de determines another non-key column. So that table, the table is not in third normal form because uh, uh, because there is, it's just because of this, because of sales person determines reason, reason. Well, those are non-key columns. Uh, non-key columns, okay. So that is enough, okay? Because you have non-k column determines another non-k column, therefore this is not a uh, problem for to fix that. So we are going to use this functional dependency, this functional dependency first to make a new table. So we are going to use sales person determines the region to make a new table with transistor as, as a key, sales, Person and then region as monkey column, and then everything else. Don't forget everything else, and don't forget transistor. Transistor to make a new table. So everything else in this case will be including custom ID, custom name only. Okay, and the plus transistor that will be sales name. Salesperson and the salesperson is actually foreign key in this case, and then primary key is this one. Okay, again, the third normal form fixing is not a clear, it's not a clean, so it may not, so you may have to do it again. So, but in this case, we do not have to, I think. So, basically, for the first table, salesperson determines region, and then this is there's only one non key column, there's only one non key column, so this is automatically satisfied. And now for the second table, we have two non-key columns. The custom ID is key. Two non-key columns are customer number and the sales person, right? Custom ID and the sales person. So in this case, do we see any functional dependencies between customer name and the sales person? Or sales person and the customer name? Probably neither, right? So customer name, you know, people have the have same names, right? So that, that that's really not a uniquely identifying a person or customer. And the salesperson, uh, so you say as a salesperson work in one area, work for one region, so definitely have many customers. So customer name cannot determine salesperson, salesperson cannot determine customer name. So therefore this table is already store number four, okay? Because there's, uh, there is no, FD between uh, customer name and sales person. Okay. So this so uh, the table. So so uh, so the table. The last table. Okay. The last table is in four number four. Okay. Okay, does anyone have questions? Can you go back to the original table? Original table was like from your course. Yeah. Okay, I'm good. Thank you. You're good? Okay. All right. So now let's say 
let's say let's try to do one more normal forms. Okay. And then we do a couple of uh, SQL statements. So let's do this one. Analyze the following table that has a uh, force net violation to see how can you fix that or uh, the thorn normal form. So look at here, invoice. Okay, customer information, invoice. Each customer have customer ID, customer number, name, and address. And then there's a quantity one, part one, amount of one. Quantity two, part two, amount of two. Quantity three, part of three, amount of three. Do you see the problem there? So what if you have one order, one invoice, which has more than four parts, more than three parts? So this is not, uh, this is actually what should be handled as a weak entity, right, this part? Okay, so you should create uh, just something like, uh, uh, let me try to do here, let's see. Okay. Oh. So let's look at this table and then let's see how can we do that. Okay. So first of all, we are going to single those multi-valued attributes out. So multi-valued attributes encode the quantity, part, uh, quantity, part, and also amount. Okay, let's do it. Let's put it here. Yeah. So first of all, I'm going to uh, take the take uh, those repetitive columns out. So repeti repetitive columns encode uh, part. Okay, and then quantity. Q T Y, and then amount. So those three will be out. So just trying to do brainstorming because this. You know, you cannot just list those part of uh, part of one, quantity one, quantity two. There's a list indefinitely because some some models may have just one, some models maybe have four, more than more than three. So you cannot just create more columns like that. So this should be handled as weak entity. Okay. So I will do that first. Maybe that's the weak entity. And then we'll think come back to see what should be strong entity. So strong entity will be everything else in this case. So what we should what should be included? It should include invoice number, invoice ID, okay, and then customer number, customer number here, and then customer name and the address. Okay, so those are the uh, everything else. So we can name those tables. So we don't really don't need a name for now because we're actually just trying to fix these tables. We're not doing ERD in this case, right? So just think of, uh, just realize that we need, uh, uh, we need a single of those multi-valued attributes out to make them as a weak entity. So that's all we need, okay? Now let's say uh, we need, say based on that, we are going to, uh, uh, going to create uh, like a sub table, one table for this, right? And then one table for that. And for that, for this table, we do need to get a primary key from this table for the strong entity. So what should be strong entity table? Uh, so basically each part, each part, uh, there's multi bad attributes. Uh, this invoice number should be a primary key, I believe, right? Is it correct? Yeah. Each each invoice is for one customer and it has many parts, many part quantities and many amounts inside. Okay, so invoice number should be primary key. So then we just, we will make this as ID column and then uh, everything else will be non-key column for that. So now based on that, I'm going to create a sub table for weak entities, which will include the invoice number as, as a part of a primary key. And then part and quantity and the amount. Okay. So the part in this case should be the part should be also part of a primary key for the second table. Does it make sense? The part should be also basically just like a um, inside the invoice, you you uh, inside 
say for each invoice, you have many parts, right? You have many parts. Uh, so they have different quantities, the different amount. So you really need that both invoice number and also the part to add to, to uniquely determine the quantity and amount. So you do need a both of the invoice and part to determine quantity and amount. Does it make sense? Otherwise, otherwise it's just trying to let's just trying to do it one. Okay, let's say one oh oh one, right? So for one oh oh one, you're going to have a, how many parts? You have a screw, you have a nut, and you have a washer. So screw, nut, screw, which has a quantity of uh, two hundred, and the amount is two dollars. Okay, and then one oh oh one again. You have a nut, and nut, how much? Uh, matter was three hundred, and then amount is two ninety five. So here have a three hundred, and then two twenty five. I think. And then you have a third pass one or one again. And that would be washer. So you have how many washers? 100 washer. Washer. 100 and then 75 cents. All right. So you see that you really need to post that, uh, post this invoice number and the part number to determine each row. All right. And the invoice number is alone is not, cannot, cannot be a primary key for this one. Okay. So then this table is. For weak entity, and now let's handle the other table. So other table will have invoice number, customer number, and the customer name, and the customer address. Okay. Now let's look at this table. This table have primary key, which is invoice number. That is, we already said that because each order is for one customer. Okay, so now let's say whether this table will be second normal form. I think it is because the primary key has only one column, right? So I'm not going to write that down. The primary key has only one column, so the ta this table is already in second normal form. But, but, but now, what about third normal form? We do have, we do see violation here. This customer number determines customer name and the customer address. So all of them are non key columns, right? So you have a customer. Customer number determines customer name and the customer address. But, but they are the or this or this are non key columns, right? So you have non key column determines non key column. So therefore, this table, the second table, that's your second table, is not in for normal form because because uh, we have non-key columns determining other non-key columns. Okay, so to fix this, we are going to use the functional dependency to make a new table with a customer ID as a key and the customer name and the customer address as non key columns. Okay, so that is using that functional dependency CID determines customer name and the customer address to make this table. And then we forget, don't forget everything else from the original table plus transistor. Transistor. So which one would be everything else? So let's look at the second table. So everything else will be just invoice, nothing else, right? So invoice. So everything else will be just invoice ID, invoice number, plus transistor. Transistor is a customer ID, customer number. Okay, to make everything to make so this is like a foreign key here. And then you will wonder what will be uh uh, so this in this case, what it will be the primary key again. So the primary key will be still invoice, right? Invoice number. And then in this case, we have a uh, one primary key column and a one non-key column. So they should be in full normal form automatically. 
right? Because uh, if, you, if a table has only one monkey column, then the third normal form is pretty much automatic if it's already in second normal form. But this one is already second normal form because the primary key has only one column. Does it make sense? So, end the result, we have four tables, or three tables, this table and this table. This table is about uh, customers. And uh, then we have a table, uh, which one? This one, the part that we, the we can take table. Okay, the invoice part that quantity image around. So there will be, so this table and uh, this table and the part customer table. Okay, so the relationship between customer and this is a one to many relationship. So one customer may have many orders, right? And then uh, between the order and the part, there's uh, like, I think this is like a junction, there's like a Gerund here. This table is more like a Gerund between like an invoice and a part. Okay. All right. Uh, how much time do I have? Professor? Yeah. Before you did the third normalization, or like the, the last one, why did that table conform to the second normal form before you split it up? This, which table? This table? No, the one above. One above. This one? Yeah. So why we do third normal form is that because this table has only one, one key column. So that primary key consists of inverse ID only. So, so that's why it conforms to the two NF. Yeah. If a table, if a table has only one key column, uh, there's there will be no partial functional dependency, right? Yeah. Yeah. So it's automatic a second number four. Okay. Okay. Any other questions? Uh, we're trying to do. Some SQL statements. I think we have like a few minutes left. Let me see whether you have any questions. If not, let me look through, see whether any questions might be difficult. And those employees hired before that and have never received commissions. I think we did the example like that. Total number of salesmen who have never received commissions. So make sure that you're going to do what? Sum of salary about the job equals to job equals to what? Um, a salesman and uh, never received the commissions. Okay. Do you see any function that that one typical finance department whose minimum salary is less than eighteen hundred? So that should be easy one, right? So if we're trying to do it, if we're doing it here, let me do it here. Find the department. So let's do. So which one we're doing? Yeah. Find the department whose minimum salary is less than $1,800. So let's just say select, just select D name, okay? D name. And then from, let's say DPD, uh, what, um, Yemajoy, uh, EMP, um, DPD DPD number equals to EMP DPD number. And then we need to group functions, so we do need to group by. So group by D name. And then heaven minimum salary is less than 1,000. Okay, so that should be Z, Z, minimum uh, 1,800, so 1,800, 1,800. Okay, so now let's see. Job categories whose average salary is more than 1200 and the maximum salary of each department among employee hired. So let's say they will, we want to find the minimum salary for each department. So we are going to do a select minimum salary. So mean cell for each department. So we can use the DPD number from the MP and then go by the DPD number. Right. For each department. And now let's say whether we need to select cases. Yeah, minimum salary, which one we're doing? Among people hired, right? Among people hired before 1980. So we do need to select cases. So it means 
before where by we should have a where clause where file date must be before so less than 1980 so let's just say to date okay so also 1990 and I want to change it as 1990 to a year number there we go so that will help us to select case if there's a comma here there's a comma in the middle okay Okay, before 1980. Five number employees hired this year. I think we did that in class. And then uh, find the standard deviation, we did that. Find the power and the minimum salary is more than 2,000. I think that should be very similar. Find the number of employees in each department. That should be simple. Find the most recent hire date among those hired before 1980 for each department. So you're going to do select case selecting cases too. And then you also do group by, and then you do maximum higher date. For an average salary for those employees whose name starts with J in each department. So basically, you, in this case, you select cases too. So you so name like J, uh, percentage sign, I think starts with J for each department. So you need to group by department again. And then find the job categories with the maximum salary among the people hired after 1980 is more than, I think this is kind of same, you know. And then find the employee age. We did that, right? Just higher date, uh, just higher year minus current year. Total amount of commission. Okay, so this one is say, so we want to find the total uh, annual total pay for each employee. So that one is, uh, so we're going to do select, say so that's a unit. And then let's try to find a total salary. So that will be, is that annual salary? Yeah, annual salary. So basically you're going to do 12 multiplied by cell, okay? And then plus commission, plus com, okay? And let's say as income. And then from EMP, so it's simple as that. However, the only problem here is what if commission is missing? So if you're trying to run this, you're going to get some kind of a strange result. Oh, what happened? Okay, this one. This one, select. Let me start it. Oh. Something's wrong. So ask you a problem not ended correctly. So let me see which one is not ended correctly. So we say select in run EMP. And then this is that plus why it says, oh, this one was not ended, previous one, sorry for that. So previous one was not ended, so it's in fact uh, next statement. So you say that some employees have no income at all. So what happened is that because some cases you have null values, so what you can do is you will change this null value to zero by using MVL function. And then the MVL it will change to zero if you make that if, if it is not value so for example if com is small then it will change it to zero if com it does not it's not null, then you you will use whatever null value to do that okay did i talk about mvl functions in class sometimes i have a confusion because i have several classes um so this is so in this this m v l com zero what does this do is this so this will turn not to zero so if com is null so we get a zero otherwise if com is not null then it was just equal to null so if com is not null so in second case it was we use whatever value of no of, of that Okay, uh, every salary people who work in dollars, average salary of people work in dollars. So in this case, you do select cases, but you need to do both. Uh, so let's just do that one as last one, I think. Okay, so I'll do that as last one. Okay. All right, so what do we do? We find the total number of employees, uh, no, uh, 22, right? Find total amount of average salary for people working in dollars. So we are doing, let's say, select, select average salary, okay, 
from uh, we do we do need a DEPD table so we do you know joy the EMP um, EPD dot DEPD number equals the EMP dot DEPD number okay and now we do where clause uh, location equals to Alice. Okay, so let's say that in this case, we, uh, let's look at a question 22, right? Average salary of people who work in Dallas. So you do not say for each anything, right? For each job or for each department or whatever. So basically in this case, you're not dividing the cases. You're only just selecting the case. You select this that has department and location equals Dallas. So there we go. So this is just like a, um uh, second uh, special case of using statistic functions the first case is no no selecting case the second case selecting case and the third one is dividing cases right so here it just we just just say select cases all right i think uh i'm running out of time for two minutes does anybody have last minute questions so even